The journey into the weird, 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 the strange, and the paranormal starts in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> UFOs, cross circles, near death experiences, reincarnation, haunted places, conspiracy, alien abductions, serial killers, Nazi secrets, religious cults, strange, strange creatures, unsolved mysteries, demonic possession, alien life forms. This is the chosen hurt only on TalkTainmentRadio.com. Radio, the way it should be heard, should be heard. And you're listening to the chosen hurt only on TalkTainmentRadio.com. Radio, the way it should be heard. And as always, I'm Ron Mills. I'm your navigator into these journeys of the weird, the strange, and the paranormal. But. You can join me. All you have to do is give me a call, 1-877-932-9766, 1-877-932-9766, or drop me an email, the chosen at talktainmentradio.com, radio, the way it should be heard. Course and heading set for demonic possessions, negative spirits, spells, hexes, and curses. In 2011, the Catholic Church officials began to devote more resources towards the training of priests to perform exorcisms. Was this action taken to keep up with the increase in demonic possessions? My guest is James and Cynthia McNabb. James McNabb has seen spirits since he was a small child. He has studied with many spiritual teachers and under three shamans to become a successful exorcist. He is also a psychic, a shaman, and a minister. Cynthia McNabb met James because she needed help to clear her apartment of a malevolent spirit. She discovered that she was intuitive and a medium herself. Together, they use their gifts to help people remove demons, negative spirits, attachments, hexes, spells, and curses. They are the paranormal investigators of Michigan LLC, and they're with me right here on The Chosen. Guys, how are you? Hey, how oh, wonderful. Good, thank you. Okay. Well, let's get right into it. What is the difference between a haunting and an attachment? A uh, haunting would be where there were spirits roaming around the house mm-hmm. or a building or an office or business. Uh, an attachment is a spirit who is actually connected to the human body and causing disruption or pain in some respect. Why would a spirit attach to a human body? You know, I I really don't understand why, but maybe Cindy can help you with that. Yeah, they attach to um, get energy, to get your light, to get your life force. Um, Some of them are just very evil and want to interrupt your flow of life. Some want to live again through you or the person that they are possessing. So there are many, many reasons why, um, because there are so many different types of attachments. There's um, the regular things that you see on TV. There's interdimensional beings that attach. Um, there's, so there are very varied reasons. Yeah, there are many different styles. I just had a client the other day, uh, oh, two months ago now. She called me up, said she's been seeing the doctors, many doctors, including the ones at the University of Michigan Hospital, mm-hmm. and they were giving her, uh, in, they were investigating pain in her back, her lower left back. Her lower left back, just above the cheek, was so painful that the worst, the worst, or the strongest, rather, the strongest pain reliever wouldn't touch it. And they did MRIs and X-rays and um, every modern thing that they could possibly think of to see what was wrong with the body, and the doctors couldn't find anything. Yet she was sick enough many, many days that she couldn't even get out of bed no matter how much medication she was taking. Hmm. So finally, her, her niece called me up, asked me if I might be able to help, and they said, it sounds to me like she's got an attachment, and when could I see her? Well, we set up a date. I went to visit with her. I was there for 20 minutes. She gave me a little bit of background on what was going on. 
I laid my left hand on the area of her back that was hurting her so badly she could hardly stand up. Mm-hmm. And the pain moved from the lower back to the center of the back instantly. I knew then it was exactly a spirit. I began to do some special work, called on my angel helpers, and in less than 10 minutes, her body was totally pain-free. And in the last two months, I've had contact with her several times, and she's not had any pain at all. She's the happiest girl on the block. So you're telling me we could mistake pain that the doctors can't figure out. Uh, I mean, we're pain that the doctors can't figure out might be a spirit attachment. It's very possible. I've, I've had actually uh, almost a dozen cases uh, over the last 15 years of that exactly. But the doctors got, are just scratching their head. And sometimes they tell a person, go see a psychiatrist. We had a case of it just this evening hmm. with our grandson, who is 18 months old, who's been perfectly healthy, happy, and fine. All of a sudden, I come home from work. He developed a fever. And um, he started crying and was inconsolable. We gave him Tylenol for the fever, which normally relieves the fever and quiets the child down. It did not. I called James. I asked him to take a look at the baby. Now you tell the rest, dear. I was on my way home from from doing a job, Mm -hmm. and I was riding in the car, and she called me up, told me about this. So I did a quick clearing of myself and got into a vision of my grandson. I, again, I called on my angel helpers. We what is a, a clearing? Look. So we understand what exactly is a clearing. You said well, you, you I, did a quick clearing of I, yourself. I, I do a quick aura cleansing mm-hmm. to make sure that I'm not carrying any energy that isn't isn't holy, mm-hmm. isn't wonderful, isn't, isn't happy. You know, I, I worked the whole day with a with the crew doing a roofing job, mm-hmm. and um, they're not necessarily the holiest people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, contractors. Mm-hmm. In any case, they're wonderful people. I love them to death. But nonetheless, we had a very difficult day, so I cleanse my aura every time I work on anybody. Okay. So as soon as I get that done, I call on my angel helpers, and I go into an out-of-body experience, and I had a look at my grandson from, I don't know, 20 miles away. Uh-huh. And I saw that there was something of a possession there. And the angels and I pulled the spirit out of my grandson, and my wife reported that instantly he stopped crying, uh-huh. and his whole attitude changed. Are was, some it, people more susceptible to these attachments or, or demonic possessions? Because I'm thinking they're a little bit different than a demonic possession because the, uh, is a, in a, I could be wrong, is an attachment a human soul? What is a demon? Well, a, a demon is something that you might consider to be a fallen angel mm-hmm. or even worse. A demon could be an entity from another dimension and has entered our area uh, of life with nothing to do but annoy us. Hmm. There, there are malevolent inhuman spirits that have no physical body and have nothing to do on our dimension of life except annoy people who might be depressed or bipolar. Okay. Well, well, we'll get back to those type of spirits. Let's talk about the ones that are here on our plane of existence and our dimension. Now, there's demons, you said fallen angels. So do you use, you said your helpers. Who do you have help you? Well, the, the four angels that everybody knows about, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, and Archangel Ariel. And there are many, many more, but they are the four most prominent angels in the sense of fighting dark energy. Hmm. And, and they help me out uh, on every occasion. And Michael, the Archangel, in fact, has a legion of blue lightning angels. Hmm. And they are all his helpers, and their light and their energy of love is so powerful that a dark spirit of any design succumbs to their power. Wow. And, Ron, should we go back and finish answering your question in terms of who is more susceptible to what? 
Yes. Uh, a spirit uh, or a demon possessing them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that anyone can be unprotected, and they can be susceptible. Um, it just happens to be what's around, and if they see someone that's vulnerable. Now, we pray for the baby all the time. Mm-hmm. So why was the baby vulnerable at that moment, point in time? You have to renew the prayers every 24 hours, is my understanding from my esoteric studies. And if you don't, for whatever reason, then you're open. Now, the demonic, uh, James has dealt with quite a bit of that. I can see them, um, why they're there. Uh, it, it seems as though their energy is denser. And they're drawn to those people that are carrying a denser energy, if that makes sense. Light attracts light. Mm-hmm. So it, a denser energy. It, yeah. I, I would think it sure. would be drawn to somebody more of a, a more powerful light, not a light spirit, but uh, somebody has a lot of energy, a lot of life. Well, for instance, there are those, well, James will tell you about the number of energy vampires that there are. Mm-hmm. How many there? There's 32,000 different species wow. of vampire spirit. So you've got that going on, too. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, so those are the ones that are looking for life force, looking for light, and they even attack a little differently. For me, part of my attack was, that um, I couldn't get out of bed in the morning because I'd be dreaming about these vampires zapping my energies and my life force, and indeed they were there doing that, and I was dreaming about them simultaneously, which I'd get out of bed, go to work. I wasn't possessed by them, but I didn't have much energy, Mm. and um, I didn't even believe in them. I didn't believe they existed. So that was part of the reason I had to call James in, because this haunting was more than just entities at the house hanging out. Mm -hmm. I was being attacked. So um, there are those that come after the light. There are those that are attracted to people that have uh, depression, and so they exacerbate the condition by continuing to bring them down. You've got the demons that just... They just like to attack. They like to wreak havoc. And there are many spirits that live on the astral plane that have absolutely nothing to do but interfere with the human race. Hmm. And the astral plane, unbeknownst to most, is really where hell is and the dark entities are. There are many, 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 many dimensions many levels of existence, and the astral is the dark one. So let me ask you, the, one of the most powerful human spirits that we've known in history is Jesus Christ. Does he come to aid you? Well, you know what? He is my mentor. He's my buddy. He's my helper. He's my guide. And I called on him many, many times when I'm having challenges. Mm-hmm. And after a while of my working with him directly, he said, look, this is really Michael's work to do. You and Michael can work together. He said, I could call on him anytime I need him. I could call on his mother anytime I need her. Wow. But Michael and I do most of the work. And, and uh, Now, we've talked earlier. You said you've known Jesus in a past life. How have you known him? That's right. In, in a past life. I did a past life regression in a class teaching past life regression. In my first past life regression, my teacher and one of the other students were also viewing my past life. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in that ancient time uh, playing on a hillside with a bunch of other children, and Jesus was there. Hmm. He was there sitting on this rock. And... The teacher was coaxing me to announce who I was viewing, and I, I, I was I was hesitating because I truly didn't feel 
worthy mm-hmm. of being in his presence. Or I was thinking, maybe I'm just fantasizing out of my own head. Mm-hmm. And the teacher, said, the teacher and the other student coaxed me and coaxed me until I finally said, yes, I see Jesus the Christ. I mm-hmm. see him standing there. And I feel like I'm at a family reunion. And I discovered later that I was his cousin. Wow. And his, his mother and my mother were sisters. I found through another minister who was a very powerful psychic, he channeled the spirit, and I asked the spirit for clarity. And the clarity from the spirit suggested that I was, in fact, his cousin, and I was James the Lesser, or James the Younger, the Apostle. Not his brother. It was not, no, not... his brother James mm-hmm. was uh, a couple of years older than me, mm-hmm. so he was known as the Apostle James, and I was known as James the Younger or James the Lesser, because my age was younger than the other James. But mm-hmm. there were two James Apostles, and I had clarity and confirmation uh, from another psychic that wasn't at that particular meeting. Wow. And yeah, my, my teacher and the other student both said they saw exactly what I was seeing, they described the scene, and, of course, I was overwhelmed with, with uh, emotion, uh, you know. So it's a possibility it, through many lives you've been training for this right here. As I went into other past lifetimes, I discovered that I was a shaman in the native cultures, I was a shaman in the African culture. Wow. I was uh, a warlock during the 15th century in Europe. I was some type of psychic in the 13th century in Scotland, hmm. um, and, and, and Native American shaman in several lifetimes as well. We've, I've done a lot of research on it, and I've gotten confirmation, not just from my own thoughts, but from other people as well who are on a similar level and similar journey of spiritual uh, existence uh, at this time of the evolution of the human race. And because we're in this moment of evolution, getting ready to shift many humans into a higher level of consciousness, the dark spirits are more active than ever to try mm-hmm. to hold as many humans back from evolving to the next level of spiritual evolvement. And that's why we're so busy with all these different types of spirits. And in wow. terms of Jesus the Christ, Ron, mm-hmm. uh, when, when James did a clearing of my apartment, um, um, he wasn't aware at that time that I had been also attacked in my sleep. And I had a friend come over who was a minister, and we did the prayers where two or more gathered there Christ is in the midst, and did prayers where I could actually feel some mm-hmm. of the tingling in my body and the pain mm-hmm. that was originally. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you to hold that thought, okay? Uh, okay. Talktainment Radio, uh, talktainmentradio.com, the world's greatest radio, and the home of Brother K, educating to liberate on Conversate in the AM. Get your lucky number at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Yes. We'll find out more, but what are shadow people, and did we invite them to come here? Doubt if you dare, but believe if you have the courage, because you're listening to The Chosen Heard only on TalkTainmentRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard. And as always, I'm Ron Mills. I'm your navigator on these journeys of the weird, the strange, and the paranormal. You can always join me. All you have to do is give me a call, 1-877-932-9766, one 877 Nine three two nine seven six six, or drop me an email. The chosen at talktainmentradio dot com. Radio the way it should be heard. We're talking about demonic possessions, negative spirits, spells, hexes, and curses. We're talking about these things with paranormal investigators of Michigan LLC, James and Cynthia McNabb. Now, Cynthia, you were just talking about this spirit was attacking you in your apartment in your sleep, right? This. Yeah. Yes, it was. And so um, 
what happened was I started feeling these pains in my stomach. Like I, I thought maybe my appendix had burst or something, but mm -hmm. I, I knew it wasn't the case because I had just had a, a really thorough checkup the two weeks before. So I laid there praying to Jesus and rolling, rolling, rolling in pain. Mm -hmm. The next morning I get up, I've got a mark in, in my solar plexus area, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I think to myself, okay, that's some kind of attack. So the next night I decided not to go to sleep but to stay in prayer. And then I felt something like a, a pinprick in the opposite side and then on the other side and nothing happened because I wasn't asleep, so I wasn't vulnerable, and I started laughing about it. But in the meantime, I kept praying because it's like, okay, I figured this part out. And this was before I actually had to call James in, okay? Hmm. So I was trying to handle it myself. So after James came in, did all the clearings, I, I didn't get to tell him everything that happened, but... Um, my friend came in, we did prayers with Jesus, to Jesus, and the pains and the tingling that had happened that night mm -hmm. started happening again to come out of my body. And it was through two being gathered in the name of Jesus and banishing the things that had been done that, that made it happen. You know, so you asked about us using Jesus and, and asking for help, and we definitely do. Okay, you, you talked about, now the understanding is, okay, a spirit a haunting is a human soul, and then we talked about demons or fallen angels, but what are shadow people? Shadow people are spirit form, that is dark shadow. There are two that are very, very popular, uh, one of them is about four foot tall and orbular, and I, I've recently seen two different photo drawings of these spirits, and uh, one has a kind of a hockey mask for a face, hmm. and the other was of the identical spirit form, but seen by someone that is much more clairvoyant than the first photo that I saw, and this photo makes it look like an, an ET, an, hmm. an interdimensional traveler, uh, an extraterrestrial, with a face very similar to the face of the, the grace of uh, ETs right. with the big eyes mm -hmm. and small mouth and, and a sort of egg-shaped head. And this spirit was actually wearing a kind of cloak that hides his body and only open at the face. And it's the same exact image. It's about four foot tall, orbular, and it's all dark shadow. If you're lucky enough to get a look at his face, the face is a little bit lighter and uh, kind of looks like uh, a, a hockey mask at a quick glance. Now, the one we uh, keep hearing about is the hat man, though. Okay, now he's taller usually in the neighborhood of six foot tall. Mm -hmm. And many people describe seeing him wearing a kind of a Bogart hat, you know, the bogey hat of the, uh, the 20s and 30s that everybody was wearing. Mm -hmm. And a, either a trench coat or something that looked like a cape. But they both come out with the same description. Six foot tall, bogey hat, trench coat or cape, and all dark shadow. And they're very difficult to see. They usually don't show up directly in front of you. Per <clears throat> Most of the time they come in from your peripheral view, mm -hmm. right at the edge of your eye's vision. And if you try to look at them, they, they jump out of the way so that your physical eyes are not going to see them. Mm -hmm. So when I hunt for these spirits, I simply close my physical eyes because it's my third eye that I'm actually viewing them with. Right. So and where would, where do they come from, though? Well, they're, they're malevolent, inhuman, which means they're really not from the dimension that we live on. They're not human ghosts. They come from another dimension, 
And the interesting thing is that when an atom bomb explodes, it actually has effect on other dimensions. Wow. Sort of like blowing a hole in the doorway that, or, or the wall or the dividing line between dimension three, dimension four, dimension five, dimension six, and it opens up these doorways where spirits from other dimensions can actually just walk right in to our dimension. And they came in because of our experiments with the atom bomb. Exactly. And one of the, one of the earlier experiences was the Philadelphia experiment. When the Philadelphia experiment went awry, mm. that opened up holes from another dimension as well. And every time these dimensions realign, and I'm not sure of the time level, but I think it's like every 12 years, all these dimensions realign where the atom bombs have gone off and the Philadelphia experiment opened up doorways. Wow. Every time they line up, more spirits from those dimensions slide right into our dimension. And they have nothing to do on our dimension except irritate us. And, and what, do, what do they do to us? Well, we start off with the orbular spirit. He finds somebody that he's interested in for whatever reason, and he begins to annoy their thoughts. He looks into their head, finds out what bothers them. What is something that happened that really pisses you off? Wow. And he repeats it. And it sounds like your own thoughts. And he repeats them and repeats them and repeats them until he's gotten you into such a state of anger and depression. Then the six-foot spirit steps in, and the six-foot spirit actually tries to possess your body and take you into an illness that the doctors can't explain Mm -hmm. and in many cases shorten your lifespan considerably. This is their goal. Pardon me? This is their goal. Yeah, their goal is to kill you. And I was listening to uh, a gentleman uh, named Dr. Craig Martin who happened to be on the uh, Coast to Coast program Mm -hmm. about 15 years ago. And he explained that these two spirits work in tandem. And the first one trying to bring you to a very low state of depression, and then the second one stepping in to possess your body with the intention of, like, fooling the gods to think that that dark spirit is your soul, and when it takes you to a death, he's hoping that he can get into heaven through your body. And well, he, uh, he, I'm going to understand this. Fooling God. Yeah, isn't that interesting? How the hell can they fool God? But it seems as though that's what Craig Martin uh, broadcast on the uh, Coast to Coast program. Hmm. And, uh, now, I've never seen them technically try to fool God, because when I come across these spirits, the angels and myself work together to remove them from the people Mm -hmm. and take them to a place that I have to call the abyss. So the angels are strong enough to, even though they're from another dimension, to rid the human race of these beings. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, 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 The sad part is, is that they don't necessarily work non-stop doing this. Mm -hmm. They really only seem to work when they are called on Mm -hmm. by the person or someone like myself who is working to remove these things from the planet. And the the angels step in and help out when they're requested to. Now, here's here's my question. Is low-level equipment able to open those doors? And I know Cynthia is able to see those doors in Vortexes. But is low-level equipment able to open those doors like microwaves or, or wireless features that we have? Because the Philadelphia experiment, you're talking about uh, some transporting something actually through the air or making something invisible. And then you're talking about the atom bomb. You're talking about splitting particles to open a door. Kim, is there things that we have that might open a door that we use every yeah. day? Yeah, well, no. Not things that we use every day. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there are things that attract, like electricity, as you know, mm-hmm. from talking to other ghost people. But but the more high-powered uh, scientific tools actually do open doors. Mm-hmm. Um, we read an article about someone at the Sandia National Lab where um, they were using a laser that was so big that um, it was allowing, as the scientists said, things to enter the planet that you don't really want to be wow. here. So um, I am certain that we have not come across everything that's roaming about here, um, but we, we handle things on a case basis, and, and uh, each case seems to get a little harder and more difficult, it seems. I, mm-hmm. I see the dimensional doors, and I feel them, and that's because my condo was so full of them at that one time that it, it was like a pin cushion. There were so many doors in that huh. place. Are you yeah. able to close them? James is able to close them. I'm, I'm only able to detect them. Mm-hmm. But he uses um, Native American and Celtic uh, uh, chants and prayers along with a staff that he has that's very, very powerful and closes the dimensions in the door. James, However, uh, these things, a lot of them reopen them, okay? Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask James. Now, getting back to just the regular spirits on our plane of existence, I, the goal is to meet God or transcend and to go into another life. Why won't most spirits move that way? Well, human, the, the, you know, human spirits. Yeah, the, the, the basic ghost that is of human spirit has been raised, let's say, in America and Europe in a Christian consciousness. Mm-hmm. And our Christian teachings have been that if you've done anything naughty, uh, St. Peter's waiting for you at the gates of heaven with his with his checklist, and he's going to know if you've been naughty, and he's not going to let you into heaven. Mm-hmm. Well, by the time most people live pretty much a full life, they've done something that the Christians have suggested was naughty and worthy of severe punishment and going to hell and burning forever. So many of the spirits that I've come across have expressed to me that they're afraid to go to heaven because they've committed some kind of naughty act that uh, St. Peter would send them to hell. So they're not going towards the light. They're just hanging around here attaching themselves to human human forms because of what they were taught. Yeah, some, some of them attach, but many of them just hang around. Mm-hmm. They just don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I listened to the previous spoke. Well, that John the 23rd, he made an announcement prior to his death, and I believe it was 2001, that the Catholic Church invented the concept of hell. Right. In order, in order to create fear in their patrons. Mm-hmm. So all of the people who live uh in the Christian teaching. James, I need you to hold that thought. My guests are James and Cynthia McNabb. They are the Paranormal Investigations of Michigan, LLC. Before you go any further, James, you need to give us your website, and if somebody's in trouble, where can they reach you? Well, they can reach me at uh, www.pimsuccess. That's pimsuccess.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, or you can uh, email me at pimsuccess at yahoo dot com. Okay. Now let's again. You were we were just talking before the break, and you said that a lot of these spirits will not cross over to light because of the fear that they are going to go to hell. So they hang around their house and linger around, and some will attach to humans. Yep, some of them do. Some of them uh, just hang around because they don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily afraid. They just don't know where to go or what to do. 
and some of them, as, as they do this, they discover that, gee, it's pretty lonely here. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm here and I got nobody to talk to, nobody to interact with. So they start turning on lights and closing doors and making noise in the night that kind of frighten people. Yeah, there's some of because I'm looking at your your files and I'm looking at your files and your website. Now, there was one example with some attached to objects because you had a a, a Civil War haunting from a war antique. So these collectors yeah. might unwillingly be bringing spirits into their home. Yes, because a lot of spirits, for whatever reason, just don't go into the light. Mm-hmm. So. So here are spirits from the Civil War that were attached to their uniforms or their equipment, their rifles, wow. and that. And this particular young man uh, was really into collecting as much Civil War memorabilia as possible. Mm-hmm. And he created a beautiful memorial room filled with, all well, there had to be 100 or 200 pieces, and this, this room... Uh, was just before his bedroom. And when the wife would go into the bedroom, spirits from the Civil War would follow her wow. and watch her, and she would become aware of a sense of being watched. She said she couldn't dress, she couldn't shower, she couldn't be in there alone, and it was beginning to bother her. So they finally called me and asked me for some help. <laughs> so we removed all these Civil War spirits and I think there was close to 10 or 12, as I recall that particular case. We removed 10 or 12 spirits that were all Civil War. And the interesting thing was many of the items that he had actually had the name of the individual that wow. they belonged to. So yeah. after we removed them, the wife reported to me later on that she could finally shower in peace and dress and undress in her bedroom without feeling eyes upon her. Now, you've run into some tricksters. 2001, it was a male ghost of pretending to be a deceased twin of a female oh, watching her shower daily. Yes, there was this young girl. She wasn't quite 16, and her family was having some spirit problems. She personally had a young boy spirit mm-hmm. who tried to convince her that he was her twin but had died at birth. Whoa. And, 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 and many, many uh, days, as far back as she could remember, this little boy was hanging around her. Hmm. And she never showered alone. Even in school, the, the boy's voice would be in her head talking to her as she's trying to pay attention to class. He was annoying her and bothering her, and she didn't know what to do. Finally, they get a hold of me when the girl is almost 16 years old, and we discover this young man, and I take him away again with the help of some of my angels. Mm-hmm. And he tried to tell me, too, that he was uh, her, her deceased twin, and I said, no, that's not possible. She was not a twin at birth. Mm-hmm. And with a little bit of convincing, as I stepped under the astral plane, and he and I were like nose to nose, he showed fear, like I was might might be there to harm him. Mm-hmm. And I assured him that I wasn't. I showed him the way into the light. We took him into the heavens, and the girl reported to me about a week later and how wonderful it was <laughs> to shower all by herself. Wow. Cynthia, um... You have a gift also that deals with, I think, smell. Oh yeah, yeah. And then how, what explain was. what that is and how do you use it? And uh, okay, um, we were sitting in our living room one night. This but what is the time. gift? Tell us what the gift is. Well, this is what I'm going to share with you. Okay, it's being able to smell something that should not be there but is. Okay. Wow. So, um, like, um, like we're in a room and no one smokes and no one's ever smoked in there, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'm smelling smoke. Or um, 
and I asked James to close his eyes and take a look who just walked in, what's going on, wow. or um, just all kinds of uh, different smells. It's just totally weird, <laughs> and it's something that um, that I discovered that I, I do. Perfume yeah. or, or a cologne that somebody used to wear? Yeah, cologne, yeah. Sometimes, one time, it, it was uh, someone that smelled very dusty and, and uh, mm. dirty and musty. Yeah, sometimes rotten eggs. It, it just depends. And, and you know when something has walked in or, you know, because things were normal and you haven't done anything to manipulate or change the environment, and all of a sudden I'm smelling something that just shouldn't be there. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, and, and it's always been attached to an entity, and usually a ghost. that has been earthbound for a very long time. So, and, and I'm going to go back to James, the weird thing, and you can help okay. answer him this question also, too. Um, I've looked at your files, and entities seem to come back with their dogs, their pets, to haunt people yeah, in a tandem. Yeah, I've had some situations. Uh, one in particular I recall, where a man was walking his dog during a thunderstorm. Uh -huh. He and his dog were simultaneously hit by lightning and died. Uh -huh. They decided not to leave that vicinity, but to go into the house that was right off the sidewalk where they had been walking. And they would stay in, that, in the closet in uh, the one bedroom until there was another rainstorm. Okay. Every time it rained, this man and his dog would emerge from this closet, and if the homeowner was there, uh, the son, who happened to be about 14 years old, mm -hmm. was able to see these two step out of the closet. Wow. And they'd walk right through the wall out of the house, and then as the rainstorm would subside, if he happened to stay in the room, he would see the, uh, the man and his dog re-enter the room and go into the closet and disappear. And it's pretty interesting that some people just for some reason don't seem to know they're dead and they don't know what to do. So they just continue to repeat the same situation over and over and over. Some people just sit on their tombstone. Some people just hang out at the cemetery or not uh, uh, the uh, funeral home. Mm -hmm. Some people just hang out at their church where their, their last service was. So there, there's many varieties of what these ghosts are going to do. As we were in Egypt, we ran across spirits from the mummifications. Wow. That were hanging around by the thousands. Looking at the opening of my website at timsuccess.com, mm -hmm. you'll see a photo of one of the temples in Egypt that has hundreds of orbs. Tons of orbs. Photo. Tons of many, orbs. Many yes, there's so many orbs in that photo. And uh, we weren't trying to get these pictures, but because we were there at night, that's what came on our digital camera. If you look at the orbs closely enough, some of them even have a happy face. Wow. It's how, how old are these mummies? How old are these orbs? They have to be in the neighborhood of maybe four or 5,000 years. They've been hanging around Egypt. Now, James, since you mentioned Egypt, and that's a place where we think there are curses and spells and hexes, is it possible for someone to curse something and leave it there and, and, and pass it on to you? I've had cases where people in this current life are hexing and cursing others, mm -hmm. and I've had cases where people in this current life have a hex or a spell from previous lifetimes. Wow. The Kennedys, in fact, had some kind of spell that was killing the people at a young age. And that was broadcast on television many times. Mm -hmm. So they can come from any dimension. And as far back as, uh, as memory could possibly imagine, and I've been able to break these spells. Mm -hmm. I've had spells cast on people in the United States that came from Sicily, and Africa, and Romania, and uh, I was able to break the spells of these individuals, and they report to me that life has changed 
considerably following the work that I've done with them. Wow. And it's, it's just not a belief that there's a dark cloud hanging over your head. It's actually something going on. Oh, absolutely. If somebody feels there's a dark cloud, you can believe something's going on. Huh. If you feel like you're limited and can't get someplace or can't finish a project, quite often it's because there is a spell or a hex of someone who doesn't want you to be successful. Wow. And that energy is lingering around. Absolutely. Uh, and, and things have been accelerated ever since the Harry Potter stories and stories like that have hit the airwaves. Hmm. A lot more people are looking for ways to use the power that is supposed to be reserved to help others rather than interfere. And But there are some good magics also, too, like Kabbalah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, it's basically all the same magic. It just depends on what the person doing the, the, the curse or the spell is intending for it to happen. Hmm. What, what do you want to happen here? Do you want to help somebody or do you want to interfere with them? And you can use the same energies to cause good luck or bad luck. But what you put out there, doesn't it come back, that energy? If you put out some negative energy, doesn't it boomerang back to you? Yes, it certainly does. What he means is that energy is energy, and it can be used for negative things or it can be used for positive. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Yeah. And definitely karma is involved here. Whatever you do, you're going to get back. And some people who practice black magic believe that you're going to get it back threefold or tenfold. If you put out something nasty, you're going to get it back three times powerful or ten times powerful. But Don't seem to care. They do it anyway. But the possibility, not in this life, it might be in another life. That's right. That, that is possible. Mm -hmm. It is possible. Because um, I've seen people do things in his life and nothing happens to them. So right. I'm inclined to think maybe it will be a next life. Right quick, again, right. give me your where people can reach you, your website again. Okay, the website is www.pimsuccess.com or uh, james at pimsuccess at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. And the PIM stands for Paranormal Investigators of Michigan. Okay, and I don't just have to be in Michigan to get receive help from you. No, you do not. Oh, we've, just, we've had many cases out of state, and some of them are even workers over the phone. Mm -hmm. I had a possession in uh, southern Indiana uh, with a lady possessed. Her boyfriend was, her husband rather, was very, very paranoid and scared. They called me up. We did an exorcism over the telephone. This woman couldn't talk, couldn't speak. Her eyes were rolled up. We're, we're going to have to leave you at that, and hopefully we get you back. Thank you so much for being with us on The Chosen. It's James and Cynthia McNabb, Paranormal Investigators of Michigan. Radio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. Radio, the way it should be heard.